Hey, what up? This is Ree here, Real Motherfuck, back again with another video. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate everyone. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. It really helps me a lot. And thank you for checking out my website, Paradox Astrology. I'm a professional astrologer. I can help you with anything. I do private consultation as well as occult teachings. So let's get into this video. So I'm doing this little segment that I'm going to call True Crime and Astrology. Because every time I watch a true crime video, one thing is really good and why I watch them is because they always give their birthdays. So me being an astrologer, I just collect birthdays so I can look at the chart. Everyone always comments underneath is, how could this person do this? What would make this person do this? What what kind of person does this type of stuff? And those are the questions I'm always thinking about too. And luckily as an astrologer, I can figure this out. So I'm going to start with this lady. And this is not, this is being, don't bring any hate to anybody on this. This is purely so educational so we can understand the mind of certain people who are able to do these types of things. And if we can indicate, find the indicators in the chart, that could potentially help people from not being victims of this. Now, these are children involved in this particular crime. And the children, of course, were too young to even know, probably even know like what astrology is. But I mean, in the future, if everybody understood how astrology is real, it would actually help a lot of people. And actually, not even just for criminals that could potentially come into your life and hurt you, but even just relationships, even just say an abusive relationship, it could help you to see that if this could impact your life in any way, wouldn't you want to know that? So this is for educational purposes only. Now, there was a lady named Brittany Gosney. She is serving now 21 years in prison because she ran over her child as she tried to abandon her other children. So they gave her 21 years over there as a life sentence for murder. She said that she was under pressure by her, it was either her boyfriend or her husband, to get rid of the children. So she drove them to a park. There was three kids. So they, she drove all three kids to the park. One was nine and one was seven. And the one who died was six years old. And she was just going to abandon them. And then the kid who was six years old apparently freaked out, was like, oh, what's going on? And then ran to go back into the car. And she apparently ran him over. That was the story. And it's just hard. It's just horrible. Like very, very horrible. So if we can prevent these things from happening, that's what I want to do. So she was 29 years old when this happened. Now, that leads me to the beginning of this. When you're 29 years old, you end up around 29, could be 28 as well, depending on where your placements are. You have a, what's called a Saturn return. Saturn returns to the same spot it was when you were born. Because Saturn takes 29 years to go around the whole circle, the whole zodiac, right? This is where we see people die all the time. Some people get Saturn returns at 27 years old. So that's a 27 club. So when Saturn does that, Saturn is karma. It's karma for your actions. Now, everybody's always afraid of Saturn returns. You shouldn't be afraid of Saturn returns unless you know what you did is something that you don't want to come back to you because it will. You should only be afraid. Of, you should never be afraid. But the only time that you should think something bad is going to happen is because it's a result of your actions. For example, if you had a Saturn return and you were working out constantly before your Saturn return. Well, what you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to be super fit by your Saturn return. Maybe you'll get up other opportunity. You'll be the most fit you've ever been. It's like, it's the karma that happens. If you're working really hard and then you end up getting a promotion in your Saturn return, that's the karma for your action. If you end up killing somebody on your Saturn return and you end up in jail, that's the karma for your actions. And that's exactly what happened. Now we're going to pull up our chart right here. Now I use the Indian chart when I'm doing readings. So I always put up the Western chart because I know people understand that, can read that better. So I'm going to put up both charts. I read both charts. There's a Southern and the Northern one, but this one is the one that my program does. 
Okay, so she was born February 5th, 1992. I don't have the exact time, but it doesn't matter. This is all the information that I got really not even knowing the exact time. I think I think she is a Capricorn ascendant. That would make a lot of sense to me, but maybe, but I don't know for sure. By the way, if I can calculate and figure out your time, if I can talk to you, it's very easily because we can figure out your time based on all the events that happen in your life. I rectify charts. You can hit me up for that. But if I can't talk to you, it's kind of hard. So look at her chart right now. Now she has so many planets in Capricorn. In Capricorn, we have we have Saturn. So Saturn is at home in Capricorn. So Saturn in Capricorn, and then you have Mercury, you have the sun. Now having a lot of planets in Capricorn, it can be a very strict person. It could be a very a disciplined person. It could be a very serious person. It could be a very controlling person as well. We also have a lot of planets in Sagittarius as well. So I'm going to go over what makes this person up. Now, so remember, if you have any of these placements, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a murderer. It just, it's all these placements combined, right? That matters. So moon is in Shabahista. The moon is Shabahista and the sun is in 22 degrees. And that's funny because there's another astrologer who always says the 22 degrees is a kill or be killed degree. It seems like it was true in this point. Now she has the North Node in Sagittarius and Purva Ashada. The North Node, which is kind of like your destiny where you end up being. It is a malefic, but ends up being like where your journey is supposed to end. It's what you incarnated to go toward in this lifetime. So that being in Sagittarius and Purva Ashada, they're adamant towards their beliefs. It's kind of like do what I say, but not as I do type people. It's don't practice. They don't really practice what they preach, but they, they're going to tell you what to do and you better do it type, type of thing. And they're also very obsessed with their beliefs. These could be people who are very religious, like ultra religious, religious fanatics and things like that. And also this shows problems with the father. See another indication problems with the father it's someone who look at people like idols like almost like a father a guru things like maybe a priest or something like that and having secrets to benefit their beliefs as well they're very secretive and going also going viral over controversy you'll see these people doing that as well they're also very aggressive approach because rahu it exaggerates their beliefs so they have an unrealistic approach to hopes and beliefs of fathers. They're like an army that assembles for war kind of thing. They have the power to bring communities together. And with Rahu being here, it's a malefic. So it's for malefic purposes. So she brought a whole community together because they thought that the child was missing. Because at first she said the child was missing and she lied until the police interrogator and then she confessed. Now, this also gives a person a feeling of powerlessness and incapable of starting things because they feel like they're always being stopped from resistance from others, like life is not fair for me. And Rahu, in its nature, it chases, it makes it uncooperative and kind of hasty, kind of ill-prepared and over-ambitious person. And it's attacking opponents when you also know you can't defeat them, but you're still going for it. It's almost like committing murder, knowing that you can't get away with it, but she was still trying to get away with it because after she ran over the kids, she apparently took the body and went to dispose of the body and then they found it later. So she was trying to get away with something that you just can't get away with. It's the person who goes on journeys with not enough fuel to complete it and with the lack of foresight to understand that, hey, we're going to run out of gas at some point. Also, she has moon opposed Jupiter, which is like over the top of displays of emotion and can't hide their feelings, mostly of jealousy, addiction, and to what other things make them feel good. And the person had a few relationships. The kids came from different fathers. A lot of problems in relationships come stemming from the father as well. It also can create disgrace and separation and illness and self-destructive behaviors, compulsiveness, oversharing, having the public in your personal life, which is what happened. You did something that created the public to go around you and now everybody's in your personal life. Like me, <laughs> like I don't even know you, you know what I mean? So these are the things that happen. And also it creates separation from the person you're with. Now the person she was with, now she's going to be separated for at least 21 years and probably forever because of what you committed this crime because now you have to go to jail. So the moon and Shabbatista is restless by nature and religious and they regret decisions that they make hastily. So I'm sure she regretted that. You're not supposed to make decisions when you're a person like this in the moon and Shabbatista. 
don't make it in a hurry because you'll always regret it. You're supposed to take your time. And they have many ups and downs in life and they have to be cautious not to be around the wrong people because they're going to make wrong decisions. And the anger in this nakshatra is uncontrollable and they become violent, but they calm down easily and they are secret and private by nature. So probably she's not a very patient person. It was very hard for her to deal with three young kids and probably got very angry. They don't get love or affection from their father. They're suffering. Probably their father was almost like a torturer and they get love and affection from their partner. Eventually they have a loss and separation from their partner. Like we see here, many indications of that. And they love their family, but they don't get it back. Their family doesn't love them back. Um, this woman was actually an orphan and she was grew up in orphanages, so in the system. They also suffer from hatred and problems of health due to alcohol. So I have a very strong suspicion that alcohol played a role in this. They also said that when it comes to torture and stuff like that, they said that they would hog tie the children. That's what one of the dads said. So I think she was tortured by her father and ended up being a torturer, which happens a lot. This moon being in the third pada, which I believe it is in the third pada. I don't have the exact time, but it makes sense. It also creates fame, but in this case, infamy it makes you infamous. See, it all depends on your level of consciousness that determines your life. So Mars, there's also Mars conjunct Venus, which indicates abuse. And a lot of people have this. Abusers have this and abuse people. I have this and I was human trafficked. Jeffrey Epstein has this and he was a human trafficker. It really indicates abuse or abusers or human trafficking in a lot of cases. Also, Uranus conjunct Neptune, which is rebellion. It's known for doing something rebellious, but Neptune equals prison and equals isolation. So when you have Uranus here, Uranus is conjunct Mars and conjunct Venus. So that ends up being, you did something out of rebellion, something that you're going to be known for, murder, and you end up doing that unexpectedly out of nowhere, which leads you Neptune into prison because, which ended up being an attack on someone and in a relationship, Venus. Mars conjunct Venus, like abuse of a relative or abuse of somebody you're in a relationship with or you know in some type of way. And Venus represents those people. And so that's why you see there's Uranus, there's Neptune, there's Mars, there's Venus, all in the same house happening here. Yeah, so many plants in Sag is also thinking you're always right. You're always, you're one of those, you're based on your beliefs. So we have Mercury conjunct Saturn as well. And then also when you have all these in Capricorn, the Capricorn energy can bring a lot of control, authority, cold, and focus on goals, but not necessarily relationship. And Mercury conjunct Saturn is a cold speech. It's someone very, very strict. And Venus conjunct Uranus, she falls in love very unexpectedly, but she also has Venus conjunct Neptune, which is illusions in love. It's disillusionment. It's like you think you're in love. That's why People go from relationship to relationship and they think this is the one and then they break up and they're like, oh, it wasn't the one and they hate them for it. It's like you're making this up in your mind. Like that doesn't necessarily mean it's a mental illness. A lot of people have this. A lot of people have this, but you're not seeing reality kind of thing, right? And then you also have Mars, which is there and it attracts illusions as well. She also had Sun Square Pluto. Now, when people have Sun Square Pluto, I have this too. I've seen a lot of people with this. You have a lot of problems with men. You're going to have power struggles with men. Son is men or the father. So not always the father. I don't have problems with my father. My father's my best friend. But with with men or men trying to compete with you or power struggles, things like that. Like I said, I was human traffic. So it's like power struggles within those things or authority figures as well which is what landed her in jail. She probably had a lot of problems with her father. That's more of that. Venus is also in Purva Ashada, and that's a reasoning and rationality loves to segregate and nitpick, leading to conflicts and disputes. And Venus is in Jupiter and Jupiter's sign. So it's frustrations in relationships. This could be not very good at relationships. And Mercury is also combust. So Mercury combust, they said that she could have mental illness. This could create some mental illness because Mercury is kind of a problem of communication. It's combust. It means it's it's not working properly. She's really bad at communicating. Probably have a lot of anger as well. And it's also intellect. So maybe you're you're not the smartest person. That, that could be it too. Sun in Shravana is that no one ever knows their true self. So they can disguise themselves very well. It's like painting a different picture of who you really are. So. This person, that's why they could kind of be in an interrogation scenario for a while and lying and lying and lying, but eventually it came out. A lot of people didn't really know who they really were. Also, we have Sun conjunct Saturn, 
is difficult childhood. So she probably had to grow up really, really early and full of restrictions and problems with the father, with his communication and his counseling, which is the son. And he was probably very strict and very absent. Probably, this probably gives her a lot of depression. She's probably very critical of herself, very critical of others. Also problems with self-expression, doesn't feel like she can she can really, it's because Saturn makes everything very heavy and strict. So doesn't feel like she can express herself, holds a lot in and very pessimistic, rigid, high expectations of everyone around her that people can't live up to, probably relationships, children, things like that. And takes on way too much responsibility that probably after she knows she can't handle, like having too many kids and not being responsible for them, wanting to just go drop them off after nowhere. That's what happens. And Jupiter is in Perva Falguni. So high expectations again in love and relationships resulting in breakups and separation. Probably expected to be treated like a queen because this is in Leo. Leo's like the royal part of it. High expectations that no one could deliver. You know, it's unrealistic. She has Neptune. She probably believes in and you know the prince charming coming to save her and like none of these things are are correct also she was in the Naksha when I heard she went to prison I'm like oh you're probably in the Dasha like Dasha Saturn there's different Dashas which are the chapters of our lives right and so this is very important you could look up the chapters what chapter you're in based on what planet and that's the energy of what you're going to have for that amount of time this is Dasha until 2034 she's in Saturn Dasha so yeah, she's going to be living in Saturn is authority, it's government, it's restrictions and everything. So she's going to be living out. I don't know the exact time the Dasha started because I don't know the exact time she was born, but she's going to live out almost her entire Dasha, Saturn Dasha in prison. It's one of the harder Dashas. She was born in 16 year Dasha of Rahu and that was the hardest one. So she probably had a very difficult childhood growing up in Rahu Dasha, probably a lot of abuse and things like that. And then Saturn is bringing that karma. If you go through Saturn Dasha and you put out good karma out there, you're going to have a very good one. You're probably going to be pretty busy. You're probably going to be busy at work or become an authority figure there because there's positive ways. But for her, it's about being locked up. The other thing is when this happened, which was February 26, 2021, that's when she was having her Saturn turn but the problem is with having a Saturn return, which was 12 degrees from her Mars. Now, when Saturn conjuncts Mars, there ends up being a lot of accidents. Accidents happen. And this is kind of a larger conjunction, but it was still there. And the problem with having so many planets in almost just two houses is that whenever a planet hits one of those transiting planet hits one of those natal planets it hits all of them and creates an event so that becomes a problem and then we also have pluto in aquarius at that time too transforming whatever house this is, is probably the first house transforming those she had her saturn return so she got caught when she's having her saturn return create the accident then got caught. So Saturn was moving forward. And then as soon as Saturn went retrograde in that exact same place, that's when she got sentenced to jail. So Saturn, the karma, this is the karma for your actions. So it's just really interesting how you watch how the planets move, how everything moves. And I don't want to make this video too long. It's already half an hour. But thank you a lot for joining me. I hope that kind of answers some questions about the mind of someone who could do this. And hopefully that can help you from steering away from people like this. If you learn astrology or consult me and I can help you with anything. And thank you so much for joining me on my first segment of True Crime and Astrology. Much love. Bye.